The 16th of August 2012, one of the worst industrial strikes in post-apartheid South Africa. Not since the 1960 Sharpeville massacre had the country seen such a horrific loss of life at the hands of police. The shooting down of 34 miners at a copy near Lonman's K4 shaft at Margana was condemned the world over and led to the setting up of the Marikana Commission of Inquiry by President Jacob Zuma. Its mandate to probe what contributed to the strike of 3,000 miners and the socio-economic issues that had exacerbated the situation. The determination of the miners to fight for what they believed in took lawnmen by surprise. The miners were angry. In the preceding days before the tragic events at Wondorkop, 10 people were killed, two of them policemen, two others lawnmen security guards, six were colleagues. The situation had become a powder keg, ready to explode. Several factors came into play. Various political and industrial heads intervened to try and calm the situation. A police operation was put into place to disarm and defuse the angry miners. That operation was called D-Day. It culminated in a horrific event that left the country reeling. Police denied that they had used undue brutality and set out to prove their case at the Marikana Commission. From the available evidence, it is very difficult to see in, from a legal perspective how the police can argue that they used minimum force, which is what they are required to do, uh, when they acted against the miners. Because if you kill more than 30 people and there was no obvious uh, threat to the lives of the police officers, one will have to ask questions about where the excessive force was not used. Since the Marikana Commission began its work 18 months ago, 56 witnesses have testified. Chair Judge Ian Farlam and his commissioners have heard from the police, lawnmen, the injured and arrested miners, AMCU and the NUM. Several high-profile individuals also took to the witness stand each denying any overt role in the shootings. 279 miners were charged with the murder of their fallen colleagues. The decision to charge uh, the miners who were arrested by the police for the murder of their colleagues who were shot by the police was a dark day in the history of the National Prosecuting Authority. Uh, there was no evidence that those 200-odd uh, miners had done anything wrong, especially not committed any murder and really looked like the state had prejudged the situation and were aggressively misusing their powers to try and attack a weakened group of people. Then Police Minister Natim Tetwa testified that he'd heard about the shootings through the media, while Deputy President Sir Ramaphosa denied that the controversial email he'd sent to Norman executives on concomitant action to be taken in Margana was meant to exert political pressure on politicians. Ramaphosa was a lawnmen director and major shareholder until recently. The former Minister of Minerals, Susan Shabangu, was adamant that her actions were not dictated by undue influence and that her characterization of the strike in Marikana as a criminal element was justified. National Police Commissioner Ria Piecha maintained her office's actions were just as they were facing a life or death situation. More than a year of simmering tensions in the platinum sector followed after Marikana. It culminated in a protracted strike called by AMCU in January 2014. It took five months before the strike was resolved. Newly elected Minister of Resources Mwako Ramachodi brokered an agreement that saw miners receive a 1,000 rand increase in their salaries and a once-off bonus of 2,000 rand. Minister, you've been in this portfolio for the past few months. 
Can you tell us what are some of the biggest challenges that you've identified in the mining sector, specifically around platinum and the gold sector? Well, I think the first was the strike. It, was, it had been running for five months when one got appointed and uh, we had to assist the process to stop the strike. What's the biggest? Now, beyond that, we now have to make sure that we sustain the peace uh, within the industry. We have to be proactive, and uh, the president is now leading the process to begin to normalize the situation, particularly within the platinum belt. What intervention measures or strategies are you planning on putting in place to ensure that we don't see ourselves in the next few months facing a similar situation that we faced in 2012, specifically in Marikana? We are looking, amongst others, at uh, minimum wage. Uh, there is a labor conference that is happening, led by the Minister of Labor, to look at issues that have to do with regulatory framework and regime uh, by the end of this year. So I think the interventions that government is put in place should be should go a long way in meeting uh, the concerns that you have just pointed out. What is government doing to ensure that they are addressing the social economic issues that are uh, challenges for the people who are living in Marikana, specifically Marikana, because of the tragedy that we experienced in 2012? A presidential led a process intervention aims to build communities there in all respects uh, including housing um, health facilities schools uh, shopping centers small industries that we want to and we have developed for instance with regard to that uh, economic development zones we are begin to do some of them like in Rustenberg and so on, so that the communities there can participate actively um, in the uh, economic life. In less than five months, the Commission will have to hand over their findings and recommendations to the President. But will the evidence presented to them serve to create a clearer picture of what truly happened? And will justice be served? for the widows and the loved ones of all the 44 men who died in August 2012. Nozindombi Mia, SABC News, Johannesburg.